Hello, this is Marla Dalton, Executive Director and CEO of the National Foundation for Infectious Diseases, or NFID. Welcome to Contagious Chronicles by NFID, featuring insights from trusted experts on the latest developments in infectious disease prevention and treatment. Joining me today are two esteemed colleagues and NFID leaders, Medical Director Dr. Bob Hopkins and Spokesperson Dr. Bill Schaffner to talk about avian influenza, or H5N1, also known as bird flu, which has been infecting poultry and dairy cows in several states throughout the U.S. Thanks so much for joining me, Bob and Bill, to talk about bird flu and help put things in perspective. Good morning. Happy to be here, Marla. And me too. Bob, let's start with what exactly is H5N1 bird flu and how did it begin infecting poultry in the first place? And what does it mean when experts refer to it as highly pathogenic? Well, Marla, I think it's important to recognize that influenza viruses circulate in animals and birds and have for long periods of time. H5N1 is one of a number of these influenza viruses that have been circulating in birds going back at least to the 1990s. This bird flu, or avian influenza, is classified as highly pathogenic because it commonly causes death in birds that are infected with this virus. The reason we're particularly concerned at present is that the virus has now infected dairy cows, poultry, and some other domestic and wild animals in multiple states across the U.S. Birds and animals since 2022 and detected first in cows in March of this year. The general public is at low risk, but persons who are working with were exposed to dairy cows, those who work with poultry in commercial operations or even in their backyard flocks, and persons with direct exposure to wild birds, particularly those that have died, are at increased risk. Bittles, should we be concerned about it affecting humans? And is it safe now to drink milk or eat eggs or chicken or beef? Well, Marla, I think humans are the general public, as Bob just said, is essentially at no risk at the present time. Yes, we can drink milk. I had it in my cereal this morning and I've got it in my coffee uh, right here. And this evening, as it happens, we're having chicken uh, for dinner at home. I think the general public can watch this at a distance while we in public health and infectious diseases are out there covering the waterfront. This bird flu virus does not yet have the genetic capacity to infect people readily or to be transmitted readily from person to person. So it's a potential threat, but not a real immediate threat right now. We're watching it carefully, but take a deep breath and go about your daily life normally. Thank you. Bob, so I guess the real question is, What can or should individuals do now to help protect themselves against bird flu? First, as Bill just mentioned, in general, there's not a lot we need to do. But people should avoid unprotected, and what I mean by unprotected, at a minimum, gloves and wearing a mask and eye protection. So avoid unprotected contact with sick or dead animals or birds and with animal droppings or litter. We shouldn't prepare or eat uncooked or undercooked food or raw milk or raw cheeses. Those are ways that you can get infected with lots of things that we don't want. People who work with poultry or dairy cows should receive training in the use of personal protective equipment. And finally, following any of these things may put you at risk. Wash your hands well with soap and water. Always good advice. (laughs) So, Bill, what are public health officials doing now in response to these outbreaks? You mentioned monitoring. Are there other things happening? I know some reports have even suggested vaccinating people against H5N1 or doing more testing. Would love to hear your thoughts. Public health officials are doing a whole spectrum of things. Let me list some of them very quickly. The first is we've created, in effect, a radar system that's out there worldwide under the guidance of the World Health Organization that looks at all influenza strains. And we can analyze them very quickly to see if any of these bird flu strains have suddenly picked up the capacity to spread from person to person. And I hasten to add it again, they have not developed that capacity yet. But 
we're out there looking. And if we detect something, then we'll let everyone know. Number two, the scientists have already created the blueprint for a bird flu vaccine if we need it. We don't need it yet, but we've done all that advanced work. So if we need it, we can give the signal to the manufacturers and they can quickly make the millions of doses that would be necessary. We're reaching out to the dairy community on the farms and among manufacturers so that surely if any of those folks get ill, we can quickly get swaps, sent them to the laboratory to see if bird flu is involved. And as Bob has just said, they're being educated, particularly those who are caring for herds that have already been known to be infected with personal protective equipment, masks, Tyvek suits, gloves, etc., to protect themselves. And of course, we're pasteurizing the milk. That rids it of any virus and makes the milk pure to drink. I have no hesitation in drinking milk. So these are just some of the many activities that are ongoing. Public health, public health veterinarians, the agriculture departments are reaching out to poultry manufacturers and dairy farmers and such so that we have good, quick communication such that should anything happen, we would be alert to it very quickly. I think this is very reassuring. I guess, Bob, if this really does start to spread to humans, which we certainly hope it doesn't, are we prepared? Are there treatments that are available? It appears that the currently approved influenza antiviral medications like oseltamivir are effective against this H5N1 virus. There are current efforts to assess virus samples from this outbreak in the laboratory, and we'll have more results from those assessments in the next few weeks. The CDC has also developed the influenza A, H5 that are very similar to the current circulating viruses that have been detected, and these could be used to develop vaccines, as Bill just laid out a few moments ago. So we are have things in place, and we're making more preparations. Before we close out, I'd like to ask each of you if you have any other closing thoughts or advice. And I guess, Bob, I'll start with you. First and foremost, stay alert, but don't panic. Please do stay away from sick or dead birds or animals. If you must be in contact with potentially sick animals or birds, use personal protective equipment, masks, gloves, other things. Wash your hands afterwards. If you have potential symptoms after you've been in contact with these animals, Talk to your local health care provider. But really, I think the threat right now is very low, but we need to remain aware. Great. Bill, anything you'd like to add? Just reinforcing all those good things that Bob has said. I will just close by saying, yes, stay aware, read your newspapers, keep up with the news, and enjoy your summer. So thanks again, both Bill and Bob, for your valuable insights. And thank you all for tuning in to Contagious Chronicles. If you do have a burning question for an NFID expert, please submit it via the online form at nfid.org slash contact. Your question may just show up in a future episode of Contagious Chronicles.